Good morning. This is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.41 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of April the 7th, 2016. Remember that on the YouTube, you can have a free subscription to the channel and be alerted to new content once published. Give the video a few minutes after being published for the video to be available in high definition. Clicking on the setting button will allow you to choose high definition playback, which is particularly helpful when you're looking at the charts. In this same area, you can also control the speed of the playback. I routinely find that I can fully understand videos at about one and a half times the normal recorded speed. Also note full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into our morning report. And at the time of this cut, we have weakness across all four broad market U.S. indices. The S&Ps were down about 11 points or a little over half a percent. Russell were also down about half a percent. NASDAQ and Dow also down all about half of a percent. Crude oil down about a quarter of a percent. Euro down about a fifth of a percent. Bonds up about a third of a percent. And gold up about one and a quarter percent. Mixed action overseas, China down about 1.4%, Hong Kong up about a third of a percent, Japan up about a fifth of a percent, Germany down just a little bit below scratch, and United Kingdom at scratch. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today in the United States, we have nat gas storage, unemployment claims of the weekly variety, and then you also um, should note that we have a couple Fed chairs, Fed members speaking, Fed Chair Yellen speaking, and then FOMC member George also speaking. Looking ahead to tomorrow, there is nothing of note on the U.S. calendar. In terms of current market conditions, um, we've been kind of bouncing back and forth, but still relatively low. You see the short-term VIX is only a 12.56 skew right at the warning level. IV percentiles, very, very low. If the S&P S &P at a 13, the Russell at an 18, the NASDAQ at a 12, and the Dow at a 10. Note we had back-to-back um, -back standard deviation moves in three of the four indices and had actually a on a closed-to-closed -closed basis a standard deviation move in all four U.S. indices yesterday with the NASDAQ up two standard deviations, the others all up one standard deviation. So quite a bit of movement here in the last two days. And when it was all said and done, they basically um, went back to where they started. Let's start with the S&P futures. And you see the action of the two days, you know, largely just kind of rocking back and forth just to pretty much end up back where you started at the close of the day before the prior two days. So um, last night's action, kind of um, uh, weakness, bringing us back down into the lower half of yesterday's action. Um, obviously, something of a consolidation pattern, and uh, basically the bulls and bears are fighting it out as we come up into these upper areas of resistance that we've been talking about in recent days. Um, whether you look at diagonal resistance, horizontal resistance, uh, just exhaustion from the amount of movement that you've had without any kind of significant retracement. There's all kinds of reasons to think that this could um, be setting up for something of a retracement. And yet, so far, we've had nothing but bull flags without a retracement. So, you know, the expectation is still that we continue with this upward movement until proven otherwise. So there are certainly reasons to think that might be in the not too distant future. In terms of the Dow futures, you see a very similar picture here, just rocking back and forth, back and forth, until we break out of that congestion zone, we really don't know much. NASDAQ had, of course, the big two standard deviation move. Um, though, guess what, you know, just kind of came back to the area where we had visited prior. So 
uh, setting up for quite a little bit of uh, resistance, overhead resistance right here over the tops of three of the last four days on the NASDAQ. In terms of the Russell, It um, looked like it basically set up for a bit of a bull flag pattern, not unlike some of these patterns that we've had in recent weeks after the historic move we had here. We've um, kind of gone sideways, legged up, sideways, legged up, and we'll have to see if this is just another sideways move to set up another leg up or if this does um, indeed break down. Until you get action below this um, former swing area you really have nothing but a bull flag pattern in your expectations in terms of current VIX not a lot to be learned from here again just much like the equity markets just going back and forth and kind of ending up back where it started bonds same thing the whole market is basically caught in a sideways pattern until it breaks out of one side or the other and we'll take a quick look at gold now this is something here's the first thing we've seen of some interest on all these charts um, we've had this line drawn here for several days we tickled it a couple times but didn't break out and looks like we may actually have started a move on gold um, we'll see where this goes today but right now it's setting up for a breakout of this um, relatively um, pronounced flag pattern, I guess is what we'll call it um, at this point. Let's go ahead and go to the daily report. And pretty much the same thing, as much as you have with the charts, um, not a lot of significant change with um, this report in the last three days because we've just been going back and forth and not much has been accomplished on the intermediate term which is our primary time frame focus that's the time frame that we generally trade off of and you have with the market trend phase opinion still phase four those price patterns near horizontal resistance in terms of the three market timing signals um, there's just one change um, IBD confirmed uptrend that's still in place accumulation distribution score on the NASDAQ and the S&P both at a B minus still in place GMI index still a five out of six the one change we had was with the decision point scoreboards from stock charts you note that on the Dow we have a long-term buy signal in place now so that is new and the D um, Hmm. something doesn't look quite right here this should be an up arrow somebody's messed up on um, some of these signals but bottom line is what should be here is that short term intermediate term should be all green and then we have a new signal here with the Dow on the long term on the trend model going green the rest of these long terms I believe should be red so um, kind of interesting there. We'll have to double check that tonight. Um, in terms of position sizing opinions, 100% on both systems. Intermediate term market posture still very strongly bullish with a supportive weak but improving bullish sentiment line. You notice that all four of these are still well up over 90 the strength of the trend is relatively weak but significantly improving hedge warning status remains zero plus normal with some elevated risk conditions in terms of special opinions no change here as well um, all three systems are go uh, absolutely acceptable to initiate new positions and the current market environment um, in terms of covered calls and put selling, still maintaining some aspect of defensiveness. And you see the ratios here, no change from yesterday's. One in the money versus two out of the money for the covered calls. One low beta position for every two higher beta position in terms of those covered calls. Put selling, make sure you stay with defined risk positions and position size and the scale that you're willing to own. In terms of those volatility warnings, um, we did have the volatility ratio warning which had fired one day past 
Well, it's back into the warning status, so um, has gone back into the extreme level. So we'll be waiting to see that fire again. In terms of distribution days, we have the NASDAQ has hit the warning status with the five, uh, five distribution days in the last 30. We also have the intermarket risk aversion indicator. Still all five of those has risk off. Um, has not amounted to anything yet. They all went risk off um, over um, several days ago. And yet um, nothing has happened as of yet in terms of um, the markets really kind of pulling into a pronounced risk off kind of manner. In terms of sentiment, uh, we do have um, back into warning status stocks in the short term sentiment back to an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10. Individual ETFs, um, you have the LQD, that's also at a very high extreme sentiment level. Watch for potential reversal patterns when you get these high sentiment levels. Just the fact that they're in extreme does not mean that it is um, ready for a counter trend move. You have to look for those reversal signals. Fear and greed index popped back up to the upper quadrant with yesterday's action. So back into the extreme greed area. And then in terms of the intermediate term market posture for the various indexes and ETFs, um, no change on any of these from yesterday. The last signal was crude oil going bearish on 4.4. We will note that we have a nice mix here of both defensive and higher beta. So that certainly is of note. Uh, in terms of the uh, action from yesterday and market posture sector specific, uh, you note that it's mostly green, though the exceptions, transportation, financials, industrials, retail, um, you know, some of those higher beta areas, but it's not a perfect picture. Here is materials 1.36, and, and it's holding up okay. And, um, and energy, also 1.28 on the beta, and the short and intermediate term is also uh, on the upside there as well so very much a choppy mixed picture coming out after the recent two three days of price action as this flip flop back and forth in terms of percent change yesterday healthcare was the story biotech has really been coming on xlv broke out in fact we can go take a look at that chart real quick we've got a little bit of time today you note that um we had a bit of a wedge pattern here, and normally the wedge pattern would be expected to break down because the pattern coming into it was um, in this direction. But um, so this is kind of a counter trend kind of move, and then you expect it to break down. Well, it didn't do that, and in fact, um, it has had a very strong um, break out of this pattern. To the top side, it's uh, not just a break of the wedge, but this is clear in the cloud. Chi Cal breakout with the trailing line. Uh, very, very strong pattern here with the healthcare sector. And a lot of this has to do with IBB. The look at that. So it's still in the cloud, but this is um, quite a, an action coming out of this recent bottoming pattern. You could look to see where you've got a bit of a W and retrace return back to an end of trend and then um, bounce off of that and then clearing the horizontal resistance with the action of these three candles here and very pronounced breakout of that now we'll feel even better when ibb clears this cloud and starts to um, form higher highs and higher lows um, but it certainly is um, well on the way it would seem. Back to the, the sector itself, you see the effect of the biotech has had on the sector. And I think that's it for today. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. In terms of anything of special note, let's go ahead and flip through this a little bit. 
Uh, well, on the YouTube, I mentioned at the beginning a couple things about YouTube. Remember, the to subscribe to the YouTube channel is totally free. But what that gets you is it allows you to get notice that content's been posted. I generally try to get content up by 7.30 a.m. Central Time. But sometimes it's quite a bit earlier, and every now and then it's even the evening before. So if you'd like a heads up when I actually get this posted... Um, by subscribing to the YouTube channel, you will get notice. Um, also, note when you're on that YouTube channel, there's a little gear setting. And when you access that gear setting, you can make sure that you're watching this in high def. And also, you can play with the, the playback speed. And normally, um, I find when I'm listening to videos myself, I can listen at about one and a half times the speed in which it was recorded and still perfectly understand the video. And that'll turn, for example, my own videos who often can run up to about 20 minutes into about a 13 minute playback, kind of um, making good use of your pre-market time. So a couple things to note with that. Now I'm just going to scroll through the rest of these. If you see something of note, just hit the pause button, go to the hyperlink, get additional details. Disclaimers as always hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers note down here at the bottom There is the hyperlink that takes you to the full set of disclosures We'll see you back here tomorrow morning for the Falcon global market preview good trading